Hello, in this video, I'll talk about how to design a data pipeline given the scenario. You can expect these kind of questions in your system design data interview rounds or even in your day-to-day uh, -day work as a data engineer. Okay, so today we'll talk about designing a data pipeline to get the count of login events. So the question can be very vague in interviews and also in your day-to-day -day work. And it's your responsibility to gather the information by asking a bunch of questions. I've already made a video describing kind of framework and what questions to ask uh, whenever you have to design a data pipeline. Uh, I will uh, link the video uh, here. Uh, go check it out if you haven't already uh, looked at it. And these are a bunch of the questions uh, that I've explained uh, in that video. So I just copy pasted it from there. So let's get started. Okay. So the first question that we need to understand is understand the metric in detail. Okay. Here, the metric is straightforward. We are looking to get the count of login events. Uh, we can assume that we work for. Uh, company that owns the an app and our analytics team is looking for count of login uh, number of people logging into the application okay so that's the metric and the second one is how the output data will be used will it be used in a machine learning model or will it be used by downstream sd team or will it be used by downstream another data team or will it be used by bi Right. For this, we'll assume that we will use the output data to display in dashboard. Okay. And what's the refresh rate? Let's say we want it to refresh in real time, meaning we want our output data set to be updated as soon as the input data is available. Okay. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll also show you how the design changes if we want to go with batch refresh rate or batch per day, okay? Uh, we'll talk about it then, uh, talk about it at the end, okay? And what's the data retention? Let's say we only care about last 24 hours worth of data and we don't care about uh, anything older than 24 hours for this use case, okay? And the next one is, how are we getting the input data? Let's say we have a logging service that sends the events. Whenever someone logs into our app, there is a backend service that generates the event, okay? Do we get all kind of events? So we want to make sure, do we, does this logging service generate only login events or does it also generate event when someone logs out or when someone scrolls or when someone clicks on something or when someone likes or some, when someone writes something, you know? So we just want to make sure what kind of events do we get? For simplicity, uh, let's say we only get login events. And next question is, what's the data structure? We'll just have uh, a simple uh, JSON, which will have attributes like user ID, timestamp of when they logged in, and maybe what country they are from. Okay. And the next one is how many events do we get per minute? Per minute. We just want to understand the volume. Let's say we get 500k. It's estimated that we get 500k events per minute, something like this, uh, just to understand the scale that we are working with. Any business logic that needs to be taken care? Uh, here we'll talk about. Uh, uh, to understand if we need to include any specific business logic in our transformations. Uh, for simplicity, I'll just ignore this and just say any. And then what's the refresh rate for your dashboard? Uh, so here, real time, meaning this is the latency for the data pipeline, and this is the refresh rate for your dashboard. So let's say we want our dashboard to refresh every 10 seconds automatically open. So if I open the dashboard, it should have the latest data. So the dashboard should be refreshed 
every 10 seconds and I don't have to you know, refresh it by clicking a button or something. All right, so these are our requirements. So you probably have a better idea of uh, uh, how, uh, like what our requirements are. So the main thing is we want to design a real-time pipeline and then we are on, we want our dashboard to refresh every 10 seconds and we want it to be scalable because this number can keep uh, can increase in future and then uh, we know that the input is the events and the output data will be in a dashboard let's start the design we will start with the ingestion part uh, we have a login service that's going to send the events events to us right so I will go with AWS managed services for this design. Um, so there is a service called SNS, Simple Notification Service. Let's say our login service sends or writes the events to SNS topic. SNS is PubSub system. Let me quickly show you uh, about SNS. So you can think of this message publisher as logging service. So whenever someone logs into the app, logging service sends that event to our SNS topic. And then we have a, we will have a queue that's subscribed or that listens to this SNS topic so that all the events are in this queue, okay? So in short, SNS is a distributed publish, publish subscribe service and SQS is a distributed queuing service. Um, I'll add more details in the uh, description box so you can go and check out those services yourself. All right, so the next component will be SQS. So logging service sends events to SNS and SNS uh, SQS reads it from SNS. All right. So this is the ingestion part and the output outside uh, or the dash uh, output side of things. Uh, we want a dashboard that gets refreshed every 10 seconds, right? Uh, so let's think of few options. Tableau and QuickSight are the main dashboarding tools uh, that comes into our mind, right? Um, but I don't think they are ideal for this scenario because refreshing uh, Tableau or QuickSight uh, every 10 seconds isn't ideal. And I don't even think there is a way for us to refresh it, um, you know, at uh, 10 seconds level. Uh, I do know QuickSight, I think uh, the lowest refresh rate it offers is like one hour or something. Um, even Tableau, um, I don't think it's possible. Even if it's possible, right? Um, we probably have to use some APIs or something uh, to refresh those dashboards. Here, the criteria is that dashboard should get refreshed automatically. Uh, like no one has to click refresh or something. So we'll have to choose something other than Tableau and QuickSight. I will go with OpenSearch or Elasticsearch. Uh, OpenSearch is used for real-time analytics, mostly for log analytics. Uh, OpenSearch comes with uh, an integrated dashboarding tool called Kibana, and you have an ability to do refresh every 10 seconds in Kibana dashboard. So let's go with Elasticsearch for this um, use case. Basically, Elasticsearch will be your data store, and the dashboarding tool will be Kibana. Let's see if we have Kibana in this mode. Say dashboard. Okay. So this will be a uh, Kibana dashboard. Okay. So we have our ingestion side and output side sorted. Now the main thing to think of, think about is the processing layer. Here we don't have much. Uh, in terms of business logic, right? We just need to uh, move the events to Elasticsearch so that it can get displayed on the Kibana side, right? So I'll go with using Lambda. Lambda again is an AWS managed service, uh, it's a serverless service. So you can think of uh, a configuration where every time there are 100 messages in queue, 
this lambda gets triggered. Um, you can configure the trigger based on number of messages or the amount of time. Let's say we'll trigger lambda uh, uh, the max of 100, 100 messages or every 10 seconds, whatever happens first, it triggers a lambda. And then one, once, uh, uh, once the events are in lambda, lambda just reads it and writes it to what's called Kinesis Firehose. Firehose is, uh, it doesn't do much. Uh, you can think of this like uh, a water pipe. You send some water in and the water comes out. Um, to but the but Kinesis Firehose has predefined destinations. You can either write to S3, Open Search, or I think Data Stream. So here we have our uh, destination to V Elastic Search or Open Search, right? Um, so we can use Firehose as our uh, middle layer here. So on a high level, this will be our design logging service. Writes the events to SNS, SQS listens to SNS topic whenever there are like 100 messages or 10 seconds or every 10 seconds, it triggers Lambda. Lambda just reads those events and then uh, sends it to Firehose and Firehose writes it to OpenSearch and we'll have a dashboard that links to, that's linked to the uh, Elasticsearch or OpenSearch uh, for, uh, for getting the count of events in last 24 hours and it refreshes every 10 seconds. So this is our real-time pipeline. Here, I mean, this is not the only way to achieve this, right? Because if you think about it, Lambda, we are not doing much. We are just reading the events and writing it out. We are not doing any business transformations or things like that. Uh, we can avoid this as well. The, just an alternate way to think about is that we can have what's called data streams. Data streams is service uh, provided within AWS Kinesis uh, suit. So we can have our stream subscribe to SNS topic instead of queue. We'll go with streams. So whenever there is a message in uh, SNS, streams get that message. And then we'll have our analytics application. Uh, basically, we need a processing layer, right? Uh, so we'll go with Kinesis Analytics, data analytics application. Uh, so it reads the data in real time. And then it dumps the, uh, oops, it can write the data to Elastic Search. So we can avoid these, uh, instead of going via the first route, we can do this route as well. And data analytics is where you will write your uh, real-time script, like Apache Flink, uh, which reads in from data streams, which reads the streams and writes it to Elastic Search. So this is another way to go about it. Uh, so again, there is there is no right or wrong answer. It's it depends on your use case and trade offs and uh, you know costing all that all that stuff. So that's about it on the real time side. Uh, so let me add real time here. So as we talked earlier, uh, we want to also cover what if it's batch, right? Let's say all the requirements stays the same, except we want it to be refreshed once a day. Even dashboard needs to be refreshed once a day instead of 10 seconds. So how would we go about it? Uh, so in that case, uh, so the input side of things again will not change. Let me first copy this. Let's say we will go with uh, uh, SNS SQS route. So the input side of things doesn't change. On the output, now you can use a tool like QuickSight or Tableau, right? Because once a day refresh should be uh, fine in either of the services. So we'll just go with QuickSight. And for the data store, we can either go with Redshift or uh, Athena. For something like this, uh, like basically we are just storing last 24 hours worth of data. Um, we can go with either of them. It doesn't, it shouldn't matter. Let me go with S3. So the output data will be in S3. Instead of triggering Lambda every 10 seconds, as we were doing it previously, what we will do is we'll just store the messages in the queue and maybe use another service 
another AWS service, which is Glue. AWS Glue is basically Spark cluster. Um, you can write your Spark jobs. Um, so what we can do is we can trigger this um, Glue job once a day. You can have some uh, like a cron scheduler or something that triggers this job once a day. And that job reads all the messages in the queue then writes it to S3. Okay. And from S3, you can uh, have an Athena connection to query the data in S3 and present it in QuickSight. So, so you have noticed, right, how, how like the requirements changed the design. Here, we are basically processing each and every event as we get it. Here, we're just uh, storing the events. Uh, in a queue for one day. And then uh, once a day we are running this glue script, kind of Spark script that reads all the messages from queue, um, gets the count and writes it to S3 or uh, yeah. if you're talking about simple count, right? Uh, then it will be just one record. So uh, to avoid all that Athena connection and stuff, I'll just go with regular data warehouse. So we can use a Redshift, Amazon Redshift here. And then you can have a quick set dashboard connected to Redshift table uh, to display the count. Okay, so hope you have got the idea. Let me write this patch here. Again, don't worry if you are not familiar with uh, any of these AWS services, but I, I, I hope you at least have an idea on how to approach the problem. I will try to add uh, uh, useful resources in the description box so that you can read about all these different services. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in next videos. Thanks. Bye.